Good morning. Today is March 25th, 2015, and we're at the Jewish Community Center in Stanford, Connecticut. And on behalf of the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County, we have the pleasure of interviewing Howie Breslau. Good morning, Howie. Good morning, Lester. Thank you very much. Howie, uh, where were you born? I was born in New Canaan, Connecticut, but the birth certificate says Norwalk because there was no hospital there. All right. And uh, where did you live when you were came home from the hospital? New Canaan. Uh, Elm, Elm Street, uh, Maple Street in New Canaan. Uh -huh. That was right downtown, so to speak, because uh, there wasn't too much land available out in the sticks for uh, Jewish people. And what year was that? 1939. Mm -hmm. And uh, were your parents living in New Canaan yes, before they were. you were born? Yes, they were. My father had come in about, oh, let's say, maybe in the early 30s. He and actually probably late 20s, he moved into town, he and my uncle. Uh, there was a business opportunity for a retail store, and they came there and they uh, opened up a store called Breslo Brothers. And what type of uh, merchandise were they vending? Today you would call it a variety store. In those days it was a store of everything. If you needed a Cub Scout uniform, we sold Cub Scout uniforms. We had Lionel trains, Schwinn bikes, greeting cards, newspapers, tobacco. It was, a, it was an everything store. Mm -hmm. And uh, where were your parents from before, before they came to New Canaan? My mother came over from Poland at age two and moved. Their family went right to Savannah, Georgia. And my uh, father was born in New York. And where did they meet? Um, here in Stanford. The, uh, my mother was brought up from Savannah to uh, meet somebody through a cousin of hers, Lou Consport, that had a store here in town. Yes. He was my mother's first cousin, or second cousin. And they knew of a nice eligible bachelor in New Canaan named Mike Breslow, and uh, it was a shit out. Mm -hmm. And your mom uh, was the one that was the lucky person? Mm -hmm. They both were. Very good. And uh, when you uh, started school, uh, what was it like to be one of the few Jewish students? You mean to be the Jewish student? The Jewish student. Yeah, the Jewish student. Um, it wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it either makes you or breaks you. In my case, it made me. Uh, I learned to be uh, a self-contained person. I was never invited to any the uh, mixed, uh, you know, parties as a child or a teenager. Uh, the one time I was, the uh, mother of the girl ended up calling my mother and saying, "Please understand, it's being held at the country club, so you know we can't have your son." You know that type of nonsense. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, my social life really didn't get going until I was 16 and the driving, coming to Stanford. I had met a lot of people going to Hebrew school, uh, you know, so I knew people that way. To go to Hebrew school, I'd have to uh, walk down to the train station, take the train to uh, Springdale, go off at Springdale and take a bus up to uh, near near the. I guess it's where the old Jewish center yeah, on Prospect Street, Prospect Street. Yeah. and I'd walk through the back there, you know, behind the school, behind the high school, and uh, that's what was it. And then uh, after Hebrew school, I would get on a bike with Larry and Fred Phillips, the doctors, and uh, they would go home to South Street, and I would drop off at the railroad station and I'd take the train home. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you got to high school, was it any different? Yeah, it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, four years ahead of me was the big Jewish class. There was four of them. Uh, my brother, my cousin, uh, Joan Rosen, who we talked about earlier, and um, Bernstein. I don't, I don't remember her first name. I'm sorry. I think it was my name, Paul Mean. But uh, so they were four years ahead. So by they had graduated by the time I got to high school. So. Uh, I was the Jew, so to speak. Mm. Were you bar mitzvah? Oh yeah. yeah. I went to, uh, my family was uh, members of the uh, congregation to Shalom. Mm. 
know, uh, I've been a member there 75 years, 76 years. Um, I must have there. Rabbi Aaron Krantz, he married me there once. He came to my 25th anniversary party, our 25th, excuse me, dear. Uh, <laughs> and he remarried us, you know, the kids had the uh, seminar done again. And he named my girls and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So Judaism has always been a big part of my life. Well, when you graduated high school, what was next? College. Mm -hmm. Went to the University of Connecticut, got a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Uh, had a, mm -hmm. had a job lined up with uh, G. Fox and Company at Hartford, the training program. And my father and uncle came and said, we'll, 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 we'll pay you what they're offering you, plus we'd like you to take over our business. And we made a very good business. At one time, it was supporting four families. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went into that, and I did that for about uh, close to 20 years. and. Uh, Finally reached the point where I had had it, and that type of business was now the box stores were coming out and all that stuff. So it was, you know, you could, I could see a downward coming. So I went into the office products market, started selling directly to corporations, and was very successful in that. So the store closed. Yeah, we sold it. We sold it. it was, and someone else is operating it under the name Breslin. No, well they did. Mm -hmm. They operated for about a year under our name, and then they changed it to their name, which is they could do whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. They were my tenants, I owned the building, and uh, they ran it for, I guess we got close to 20 years, and then we sold the building. They didn't like the uh, lease terms being offered, and I really didn't want to be bothered anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, we sold the building and uh, continued in life. And the uh time that you were re retailing in New Canaan, did you find anti-Semitism in the community? No, no. In fact, I was uh, elected president of the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a two-year term, and at the end they have a uh, dinner honoring them, and that was the first time I went to the New Canaan Country Club. I got an interesting story to tell you about the New Canaan Country Club. Um, you know, it was Jews not allowed, and there was a gentleman who had been by the name of Bill Atwood. Bill Atwood had been the ambassador to Ghana during the uh, Kennedy administration, and he contacted polio over there, and they brought him home. Uh, he came back to his normal job, which was editor-in-chief of Look Magazine. So the town in Duquesne decided to have a dinner honoring him. And it was going to be at the Duquesne Country Club, and the guest speaker was Adlai Stevenson. So he was asked to give his personal attendance list. And on his personal attendance list was my father and mother and my uncle and aunt. And they came up to him and they said, you know, it's going to be at the Duquesne Country Club, so we really can't have the Breslow's there. And Bill, being a very smart man, he says, oh, I agree. He says, isn't that wonderful? The town in New Canaan is going to have a dinner honoring me with the guest of Adlai Stevenson, and we're going to hold it in Stanford. Well, my parents got invited to the club, went, and I couldn't wait to hear about it. My mother walked in, I said, well, what was it? She says, what a dump. <laughs> <laughs> they since just fixed it, but it was a dump, because even when I went to my dinner there as the president of the Chamber of Commerce, there was nothing to... Uh, get excited about. It. But I had my 50th high school reunion there. They fixed it up. Mm -hmm. I didn't wear my star day, but that was all right. Well, that's interesting. You have the 50th reunion. Uh, did you find that you were more welcome after 50 years than you were when you were in high school? I went because I thought my wife and I looked great uh. for our age. And I found one other couple that looked great. He was the only one that didn't go to college out of our graduating class of 76. He went on to become a millionaire. He was a race car driver named Bob Sharp. Owned a bunch oh. of auto dealerships and yeah. stuff. But all these debutantes, what old hags they looked like. I mean, terrible. I remember when I left, I asked somebody, I asked Bob, I said, you know, there was this gorgeous girl in our class. I didn't see her tonight. He says, what are you talking about? She was sitting next to you. I said, that 
big, heavy horse. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed my social life in Stanford. I found it very rough growing up. As I said, it, it was hard. Uh, there were some swear words. I didn't know there were more than one word until I was uh, old enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I'd walk into the class, there'd be a swastika on the board, you know. Well, Stanford wasn't quite like that. No. Because I grew up in Stan Stanford. Stanford was my uh, safety zone. Yeah. So at home, were you, did your mother keep a kosher home? I mean, did you sell the Jewish holidays? My mother kept holidays? a kosher home, strictly, mm -hmm. because my grandmothers, both of them were alive. And neither one would eat in our house. Mm -hmm. One was from Savannah, that both of them spent the last two years of their life living with us. Um, my wife asked me if we wanted to keep a kosher home. I said no, it's not necessary. But you don't have to keep an unkosher home either. So I mean, I don't. My mother had forty-three sets of dishes, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the the old way, you know, there's. There was, a, there was a meat one, a dairy one, a good one, a, a everyday one. I mean, well, then you change for Passover. Oh my God! My father, I think it took him like a week. We used to schlep things up and down from the cellar. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. But that, that was. I mean, I still keep the holidays. No questions about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Trace doesn't come to my house. You know, it's just something I don't want. Uh, but uh, as I said, the Judaism was important to me. Well, let's uh, tell us a little bit about meeting your future wife. And meeting my future wife, I met her at a dance at the Jewish Center, and uh, I had just come out of the army a few months, or actually probably a few weeks, really, mm -hmm. and uh, met her, and that was it. I mean, what it, was her name? Joan. No. Joan Byrne, B-U-R-N. Mm -hmm. uh, when I introduced her to my grandmother, she thought she was lovely, but she wondered why she wasn't Jewish. You know, Bird is not a Jewish name. But uh, her father's name, when he came over from the old country, was something like Bernstein or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. so they, he had shortened it, but uh, he can't explain that to, to a woman whose who's married name was Kansiper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what year were you married? We were married in 1964. Mm -hmm. We celebrated our 50th. And going to strong. And, uh, two, girl, two girls, six grandkids. Uh, everything's great. That's great. Yeah. Nice. And uh, during my time, I served on the board of directors of the Jewish Center, of the Federation, of the Shul, you know, mm -hmm. the, the whole, the, you know, chair, chair part of the uh, fundraising, all the things you do between your. Uh, 30s and 50s. After that, it starts to slide back a little bit. Other things start to take preference. Well, that's all. You're active in well, so I, many different. Oh yeah, I, I like to keep active. Yeah, absolutely. So it's what you make of it yeah. being retired. Yes. How many years you've been retired? Uh, just a year. Oh, okay. I retired April 1st, uh, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I was still under a six-month uh, consultant contract after mm -hmm. that. So and that was in the office furniture. Office office products. Mm -hmm. Covered all things furniture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And what, what uh, you mentioned uh, some interesting stories that you had in your lifetime that you might want to discuss. I think it was about a reunion that we were talking about. Well, one was about the Bill Atwood story with the uh, with the country club. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't recall what other the reunion I just told you about. Yeah, that was, that was the high school reunion. I mean, uh, military service. Well, the military. Oh, you want me? To, okay. Um, when I was in the reserves, we. I got sent home for, or excuse me, we were allowed to come home for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur under the preference that uh, when we came back that first weekend, that first Saturday, we would have to uh, make up the train. And so we'd go home and 
come back and that first Saturday there's an announcement like at 7 o'clock in the morning, all Jewish personnel fall out for the gas chamber, which was the training we had missed. They called the gas chamber training. But, uh, this guy got so flustered because he realized what he said. It's ridiculous. Um, during my ser time of service, the last week in basic training, we were right on the corner of in Fort Dix of Fort McGuire, Air Force Base, when we used to listen to planes take off maybe once an hour, once every two hours. All of a sudden, the planes are taking off every three minutes. We're hearing rumbles in the street, and we're, we were used to being trained by lieutenants and uh, sergeants. The next day, we were being trained by corporals in private first class, and we didn't know what happened. And they said to us, well, you guys train finish up well because you're going to Florida next week. We had no idea when you're in basic training, you don't get a newspaper or radio or TV. And that's when we found out that uh, the Soviets were, uh, had missiles there that we were going to uh, go and take away. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank God they uh, turned back the ships. I wouldn't want to, uh, combat had no interest in me. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you have a, an older brother? Yes, I have an older brother. He yes. in Florida. And that's family, is the two boys? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. And uh, while you were working, did you do any traveling? Did you do visiting any other places in the United States or in oh, foreign countries? We go to a lot, a lot of times the Caribbean about every uh, winter. Mm -hmm. came uh, after the, well, I was in the store after the Christmas holidays, which was like, you know, uh, 6 in the morning till 10 at night, we would pick up and go, whether it was a cruise or uh, just, you know, Puerto Rico, St. Martin, you name the island, I think we've been to it a few times. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of our pleasures. Mostly on cruises, or did you actually? No, no, both. Mm -hmm. Both. We'd, we'd take a cruise, we'd get to an island. We find out we liked it, and the following year we might go back to that island for a week. We'd like to travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> now that you're retired, and Still looking, like to travel. you're going to travel more? Sure. Take yeah. my kids and grandkids. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, like, I like playing golf. That's my biggest uh, relaxation during the nice weather. And. Uh, just visiting, going places, keeping active in the men's club. And uh, do you have any thoughts about the changes that you've seen in your lifetime, the technology? Oh, or, definitely, definitely. And do you think it's better? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Look at a computer, the internet, without it, we'd be lost today. I mean, the whole world runs by it. Yeah. I mean, just, just, look, just look at the little telephone that's in our pockets and what it can do. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to going for a ride on a rocket ship, but they're there now. Well, you brought along a couple things that we want to Yes, this, this, my wife and I received the Harvey Peltz Award working for Federation. This is through Young Leadership. Uh, part of the award was being sent to Israel for our first time, and it was wonderful to do that. What year was that? Oh, God, I don't remember anymore. 1978. Seems, uh, like, seems uh, like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> tell us uh, about Harvey Peltz. Harvey Peltz was a leader of the Jewish community in town that passed away at a very early age. We didn't know Harvey, but because of the award, we got to meet Alice and Joe Peltz, who was Harvey's parents. And we became very close with them. We visited them in Palm Beach. Uh, they would come to our parties, birthday parties. They, they fell in love with my two girls. And um, they became like a set of, a set of another set of grandparents for them. And so they had uh, three or four sets rather than just uh, two. Was uh, Harvey Peltz 
in business in Stanford? I have no idea. Oh, the family business was the lumber. Getman and Judd. Getman and well. Judd, yeah. I don't know what Harvey did. Uh, I believe he was affiliated with the Getman okay. and Judd. We also stayed in pet touch with Harvey's widow mm -hmm. and her new husband, you know, a few years later, mm -hmm. and her son, Michael. Uh, of course, most of them are gone now. Michael, we see maybe occasionally if he comes into town for the adults award. Uh, but uh, we were very close with them at that point. Uh, what did you do to get that award? Tell, can you tell us a story about the time? There's not, not really a story. We formed a young leadership group. Uh, young leadership was to get couples under 40 to come together and to be future leaders of the Jewish community. Was, um, it was enjoyable. I mean, it was more social than, than everyone there was dedicated already. It wasn't like we we're teaching them to be more dedicated. These are people that would go out and form the committees, be the heads of the committees. They would fundraise and uh, stuff to that effect. I remember uh, twice giving a mortgage here to the Jewish Center, except, except we didn't, mortgages were never repaid. We made donations uh, that we had to go to the bank to borrow because we didn't have five, ten thousand dollars in those days to just hand to a charity. But this is what this is what we all did. It was just expected to be done. Can you name a few people who were in that original group? God. No. no. Okay. My wife could. I can't. Uh, the other thing I brought here is my father was a friend. of the artist Sheck. And he signed it and down in the corner here a picture of the declaration of the establishment of the State of Israel. And uh, it's uh, something that hangs with honor in my house. And how did he get it? It was given to him. I know, but uh, can you explain the relationship between the two? They were friends. Okay. He was Jewish and Jewish. How many Jewish people were in the kingdom? All two of them got, all two or three of them got a copy of this. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to say it's original, but it's just a lithograph, but it's a signed one, and uh, hangs with honor in my house. You brought a couple of snapshots. What's oh, I brought some pictures from the store. What was the uh, address of the store? 32 Elm Street. And what is there now? Uh, the same store, a store. Oh. Yeah. I mean, here's a picture of somebody I don't know behind the counter a long time ago. <laughs> Looks like it might grow up to be a nice guy, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other picture here is a picture of my father outside the store holding my first daughter and a bunny rabbit just to get her to which was twice, mm -hmm. twice as big as she was. Can you see it all right? Uh-huh. Okay. But uh, I, I looked somewhere, I had a whole flock of pictures that a professional photographer named Sid Greenberg, who lived in the Canaan, had done for us. He had uh, come in one day, and I, m I remember when I was in the hospital with a heart attack, Sid walked in and he brought all these pictures of us, mm -hmm. which was very nice. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else I can answer for you? Well, I think... Uh, I mean, I, I, well, there, there are some... S I'm sorry. Could you tell us the names of your children and your grandchildren? Oh, sure. Go into, tell us a little bit about your family. Okay, my family. Okay. I have a daughter, Marcy. She's my older daughter. Uh, she's married to Serge, and they have four children. They have Charlotte, who's 17, Sophie, who's 15, Marcel, who's... Uh, 10, and Francois is 7. As you notice, they're, my boys are French, so they're all uh, French, French, French and American citizens, dual citizens. Mm -hmm. um, Marcy was head of the, uh, at the, at the Metropolitan Museum, she was head of the social part. And one day they were giving a 
dinner to honor the Emperor of Japan. So the head chef, executive chef from Restaurant Associates, who was catering it, got together with Marcy. That's how she met Serge. That was my son-in-law. Mm -hmm. Right. My other daughter, Pam, is married to Chris. They have two boys, CJ, who is 12, and Kobe, who is 9. And they are gymnasts. Uh, they are ranked in the state of Texas. I think CJ is uh, number one in his age, and Kobe is number two in his age group. Um, they both have Olympic potential. So. Uh, we go down to, to Texas just to go for a weekend and see a meet. Mm -hmm. It's no good. Uh, that's basically about my uh, family. I love mm -hmm. them, adore them. Can't get enough of them. You mentioned your family in Savannah. Yeah. Have you kept in touch with any of them? Absolutely. So tell Absolutely. us about their, a little bit about them. Okay. Uh, and how did your mother get there? Oh. But why, no, but why to Savannah? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know. That, I have no idea. I think that my grandmother's sister might have been there already because there was a, she did have a sister in town. Now, I assume that had to be the connection. Um, my mother had two, three brothers and a sister, and they all we're in Savannah. When my mother came up here and met my father, she, not, she turned around, she brought her sister up, found her husband for her up here, and brought her two best friends up here and found husbands for them up here, too. She liked having her with them. Uh, I have two first cousins that still live in Savannah. Uh, the third one there, the brother, is in Columbia, South Carolina. And, for example, I think it was about Two summers ago, we all got together and had a weekend at the Hilton Head. So we're always talking, you know, whether via social media or what have you. Um, on my father's side, he had four brothers. Each one had two children. Seven boys, one girl. So when my girls came along, they were uh, very excited to, to have girls. Um, a lot of my cousins there are gone. My uh, Next door, you know, my Breslow brothers was my father and my uncle. Uh, I see his two boys. One's in Reno and one's in, in Detroit and uh, Brighton Beach. We went out to Reno this year, spent some time there, and uh, had dinner with my uh, cousin Boynton Beach when we were in Florida this year. Um, any other questions? I mean, uh, what... Uh advice would you give to your grandchildren from your background and be true to yourself thank you i think that's great great you have, <laughs> you have a lot of knockers from your children and your grandchildren yes. you're very fortunate i i agree yeah i agree well thank you so much uh, i think it's been a very good interview and uh we will deliver personally a DVD that you can share with thank your you. family. Thank you. It will actually be mailed to you.